Yeah, that's right. We are on it. Welcome to episode number five of Black and White and What is Right. And we have a full house for sure. Two Wareham, two Fall River, and one NB. We got uh, Paulo, Reggie, and Nicole, formerly Texera, from Fall River. Sister yeah. Sherry, everybody knows her. And, of course, her mom. Okay, um, she's probably listening out there too. So she's in the house. We got a big day. Before we get into it, Facebook and social media has gone crazy with racial divisiveness. It is a contest to who could put the most horrific video showing the other groups in the worst light they possibly can. And it goes back and forth. We're divided over Corona. We're divided over politics. We're divided over a president. And make no mistake, we are divided over uh, Black Lives Matter, social, ju social justice, police reform, and everything else. Never has the dial dialogue been more uh, 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 angry and pointed and intense as I've seen it. However, today... I must say, I was a, a little surprised. I watched CNN for 47 minutes before anything was talked about. The social justice movement, police reform, Black Lives Matter, and everything. Let, let me ask you. Let, let me ask everybody uh, taking part of this. We'll go. We'll start with Peter, and then we'll go to Paula. We'll work our way down. Are you concerned that? In, uh, on social media, it's omnipresent, but on mainstream television, it's not being covered like it was the last time we had a conversation. I am concerned. I am concerned because once you downplay what's going on, then it's just like South Carolina five years ago when nine people were murdered by a white supremacist. It goes away. Sure. You know what I'm saying? It, that, that was a church away. shooting, the right? church shooting sure, yeah. and stuff. It, it starts to go away. So yeah. that's the reason why I said we got to keep on moving. What is the reason for it? Is it is it is Corona more sellable? Is Corona bringing more people in? Because I think with the I think maybe with the Black Lives Movement and the social justice uh, quest that dominated the news, what that actually bumped Corona off it. I think it gets so personal to some people and so hurtful to some people, and they got so much invested in it emotionally that sometimes they can't even handle being in the soup. Right, right. right. That they got to almost shut it off and say, hey, listen, I need to take a break. Something's happening because it is no longer, you know, dominating CNN and cable news. Reggie, let me ask your opinion on that, my man. Well, uh, uh, are you concerned that, you know, like uh, uh, the L.A. riots, like, uh, like, uh, uh, the young uh, black man uh, that was uh, choked to death in New York, that uh, that possibly this uh, uh, could be lo losing some steam with the mainstream media? I'm going to tell you, Mike, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you good, bud. All right, bud. Uh, it's a little, I have to tread carefully here because, okay. I mean, you know what I do for a living. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> the, thing, the thing about it is uh, there's always going to be a news cycle. And there's always going to be distractions. Yep. And uh, I don't really like the narrative. Um, you know, I think cable news maybe falls into a different category. But the narrative that, you know, the media is somehow complicit in their coverage, right? Mm -hmm. As far as the people that I know uh, that, that work in the business, what they do is they report the news as it happens. So whatever the top story is, that's that's the top story. Sure. As far as to answer your question more directly, I'm concerned that the narrative will um, dissipate as it has in the past. Yeah, that's so a, that's a major concern. So I, I agree with Peter with, with with regard to that, but I think it's not up to the media per se. Sure. It's up to us as to whether or not we're going to get apathetic 
whether or not we're going to let this ride, whether or not we're going to change the way we think about how we live our lives. And I know I can only speak for myself, but I've been apathetic. I've fallen back. I've known these things have been going on. It feels a little different now, though. Absolutely. And for me personally, I know that, you know, my goal is to stay involved with this. I mean, this radio show is, is part of the, this podcast is one of sure. the, the things that I'm doing, but it's not one of the things that I'm doing directly to be involved. Let, right? let, so, let, let, let me ask you a question. Bla uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, the movement for social justice, police reform, actually kicked, kicked COVID out of the headlines for a while. Why yeah. is it the explosion of COVID, the Trump horror show that is taking place in front of us, uh, 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 the sports leagues that are probably not going to end up playing now? Because that's what I saw covered. I that's what I that's what I saw covered. I saw I saw a COVID. I saw Trump. Okay. And I saw the sport leagues and the athletes having to shut down. Interestingly, I watched European soccer yesterday. And I'm surprised that CNN didn't cover the support that the social justice and Black Lives Matters got from European soccer players all over Europe. I mean, they were taking knees. They had victims' names on the back of their jerseys. They took the moment of silence. They spoke out from Tiara Henry to Manchester United to Liverpool to Juventus. It was absolutely everywhere. But for some reason, soccer hasn't caught fire in this country yet, I guess. I mean, these teams, some of them are more valuable than the New York Yankees or close to compare about in value. We're talking about Manchester United, Liverpool, soccer, right. Juventus. Right. These are big time billion dollar machines. But I did I did see MLS. Which, MLT, MLS R -R -E did, sure. No, no, a whole team had sure, had, yes. had the names of uh, yes, all the yes, victims yes. on their back. Yes, but we didn't see that on CNN. No. Uh, it was on you know, ESPN late late night. Sure, sure. Uh let, let, let me let me ask you let me ask you a question, uh uh, uh Nick, we'll get you in here right now. Who, which spoke person do you feel most comfortable with articulating the struggle of Black Lives Matter and social justice? If you had to put one talking head, it used to be Jesse Jackson. It used to be Mayor Andrew Young. You guys following me here? It used yeah. to be Al Sharpton. It used to be Jim Brown. Okay, it used to be then. Now, is there a, a, a Obama? Is there a, a, a Rep. Lewis from Georgia? Is there a face or a voice that you are most comfortable with? Paulo shaking think, his head right now. Go ahead, yeah. yeah, I think you know the the tides have really changed. Obviously, with the Congress, you know, where um, in the last election it's gotten really. You know, we've got a lot of women of color sure, and um, sure. just a lot of different varieties. And hey, we're like, yeah. more to like Keisha Bottoms, yeah. you know, of Atlanta. You know what I mean? She sure. just shut down Atlanta. You know, Sherry lives in Atlanta. I yeah. think that it's more your local officials. It's yeah. more the mayors and the governors. You're looking, you know, um, you know, in terms of Corona, you're looking at Andrew Cuomo as being so it's, yeah, it's people you, that you are would say, not You would say Fauci and Cuomo would probably be yep. the two voices yeah, like a, uh, yep. that, 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 will, that will live in history from this for sure. Uh, and I follow um, a black coalition. Um, I'm forget Uncle Paul might know his name, um, my, um, but uh, we had just a blackout on July 7th. And that was a huge thing where we don't buy anything, but we don't spend our money on anything but black owned businesses on July 7th. How does that so go? It's just like, Has the economic data surfaced from that yet? I haven't seen anything from it, but I know I didn't spend a dime, you know, and if I did, it's on black owned businesses. So I think that that's been trending. I know on the site, on Facebook, there's over 2 million followers on that. So I think it, it's, it's starting from the, the smaller people. It's not, it's not going to these big figures. You're not going to have your Martin Luther Kings anymore. I think it really? is your more you, local officials and you, your, your, you don't think there's a, people. you don't think there's a, you don't think there's a young Andrew Young. You don't think there's a, a, a young rep Lewis. You don't think there's a young Obama out there or, 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 or a Michelle Obama or a Serena Williams or a Muhammad Ali. 
That's kind of negative, Nick. That's not your nature. I'm not the, seeing that, but I think it's also I think it's also great that it's everyday people that are coming out to be sure. these. You know what I mean? I'd rather have somebody who you know, it, you know. I have a daughter. She's 20 years old. So I'd you've had, so you've had, yeah, you've had enough of Oprah Winfrey. You had enough Nikki, of the Nikki. black billionaire yeah, she did, anyway. Nikki, Nikki. I haven't seen her. She's with Dr. Fauci somewhere. Nikki. So I don't know, I don't know where they may be. Nikki, what about LeBron James? He's, he's oh, yeah, out there. Go. LeBron James is. He is. Did you see what he just did? He was just saying that he, and I, I respect him for that, that he's not going to actually put any like Black Lives Matter or anything on his jersey because what he's doing is off the court. And I, that's what I respect. You know what sure, I mean? Yeah, he does, yeah, yeah. He does put yeah. his money where his mouth is. He does. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I mean, they, they, what he did for that school in Akron, and it's easy to put the money up, but to follow through and walking the first class and graduation to the University of Akron's admissions because they go for free if they graduate from there and they want to. And you also uh, yeah. have like a couple of WNBA players that they're foregoing the season and yeah. they're going to focus their time on activism. And I think that that's, wow. a, yeah. you know, it's people that you're not expecting. You know well, what I mean? Let, let, let me play devil's advocate because sometimes I have to, Paulo, and I'm going to kick it to you right now as, as, as an ex-athlete. Anybody can come in as they come in. Now, let me be... Uh, uh, let, let me be the pain in the ass. Let me be, let me be the contrarian here. You have, a, you have a Black Lives Matter sponsored economic boycott, okay? However, right, if there has ever been anything supported by African-American people, it has been Nike and Michael Jordan, who has been silent his entire life for social justice, and racially, and racially, and racially, quali racially quality. Uh, does that bother you, Paula? Um, to to get to the end of your question is, up until now, you forget Michael Jordan just actually cracked his shell yes, he and did. realized okay. and realized he was an African American okay, and realized good. who he is and and who he belongs in society sure. since we gave to him the whole time. I mean, to to answer something from your previous question yeah. and with Nikki and Reggie. Yeah. Reggie actually hit it on the nail well, when he said that this whole thing feels different. It's different because it's a conglomeration of all these people coming together. Instead of it being a figurehead that could easily be a mega ever shot, Martin Luther King shot, Malcolm X shot, yeah. they're going to have to kill the entire African American and brown skin community, and also some a whole lot of Caucasians yes. that have. That have become humans. Rest. So, but, so, Cauc but Caucasians to the protest movement is not unique. 33% of the protesters in Selma were white. A lot of them Jewish or young civil activists from the northeast corridor of the country uh, that, oh, that, and, were, that were there. Son of immigrants. And, and the Underground Railroad was helped by, by whites Absolute, along the way, too. Abolitionists. But, yep. The abolitionists. And, you know, my hometown in New Bedford, Massachusetts, a uh, guy by the name of... Uh, Frederick, Frederick ba Douglas, Baker, yeah. Frederick Baker became uh, Frederick Douglass <laughs> two blocks from my, two blocks from my house. The house that he grew up in is two blocks from where I grew up in. So you know that's the abolitionist gave him his new name of Douglas, and then he became the already he became national worldwide. But the most dangerous thing I keep telling everybody: the biggest fear of racism is unity amongst the African in brown skin sure. uh, united sure. this is why this movement right now yeah. of everybody coming together yeah. scares the hell out of racism okay in, yeah. in, in, that's in, important though it, what it he is. Said right uh, yeah and i'm gonna and i'm gonna write on to it right now in politics there's pieces of the pie okay pieces of the pie that the democratic party has to get also is the lgbq uh, t community okay your hispanic vote and when it comes to social justice, Indians are also are, are, are awful talked about, and they're in the news as well too. Should the Black Lives Matter movement adopt all of those causes, and because of the power and the strength of the numbers, or or you just should, answered it. Or should you literally just answered it. Okay. Yeah. You gave it. Well, I'm, I, asking I, you a, I'm asking you a yeah, question, yeah. Paul. You can answer yeah. it too. Okay. You literally answered it by what you said. Okay. Um. Change only happens from within, and numbers count. So there is a guy in New Bedford. His name is Eric Andre. He's a poet, and he's a, he's a civil activist. This guy, who is Cape Verdean from Providence, Rhode Island, jumped in his jalopy, and I don't know how he made it to South Dakota 
to the pipeline, yeah. he stayed out there with the Native Americans protesting. Yeah, but uh, yeah. in the middle of winter. You send that. And, you send that. And he's me. he's still on it right now. You can yeah. bring Eric. Sure. I wish he would come on the show because Eric Andre is a young person. He's not my age. Eric Andre can come on the show whenever he wants. Why? I'll reach out to him tonight. Go ahead. Why sure. didn't the Why didn't the, the um, Native Americans get as as much attention? Down there in South South Dakota, sure. it came and it went like like a like a storm. Sure, it and, came and, in quick sure. and it went out quick. And, and that's why you, there may need to, there may need to be a face in this moment like LeBron James. Because I'm gonna tell you one thing right now: if LeBron James today had a coordinated press release, they would cover the shit out of that. You know what I mean? And I think it's gotta stay uh, uh, in in the forefront. Uh, 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 surely. Re uh, Reg, let me get back to you here, okay? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, you know, Mike, I got a lot to say, brother, because, you know, I like to let people talk and then, you know, and, and then do my thing. But here's the thing. There's a couple names that we're leaving out of the yeah. conversation that absolutely need to be in, like Colin Kaepernick. Okay, yeah. Right? Yeah, he set this off, and I, I'm not going to let anybody forget that he was the one brave enough to do what he did sure. and really take a stand when it was dangerous for him in his career, obviously, sure, right? Yeah. I think it's all coming back and karma has caught up to him. The other thing I don't want to leave on the table, I mean, we, we kind of brushed over the fact that Michael Jordan, like my cousin uh, Paulo said, has come back to us, yes, right? Yes. But he came back with $100 million. <laughs> you know, that's not insignificant, sure. you know? And yeah. I think that that money is going to do good things. Okay. Now, I don't know how he plans to spend that, you know, the hundred million that he's dedicated to social justice in this country. But what I do know is that it's a hundred million dollars. Sure. He's, right? fi he's finally listening. So, to, he's, listening he's listening to some of his advisors. And, and, and I think, I, I think, I think that honestly, everybody's honestly, right. Honestly, I think that <laughs> Michael Jordan is listening to his inner being finally. Sure. Well, he's listening to finally, his inner, he's inner black self I, finally. I have been paying, and we talked about this, Peter. I have been paying attention to this for a long time. I was a young Democrat political science uh, uh, major at a school that was down south, okay? When Jesse Helms ran against Harvey Gantt, does anybody understand the significance of that? It was talked about. In Jordan's latest thing, Doc Beverly, when he said Republicans buy sneakers too, where they couldn't be arguably one of the most racist senators, hold on, in history in North Carolina, okay? If Michael Jordan would have took support, I think Helms won by 1%, okay? And there was a famous ad on TV by opposition groups of a black hand getting a job over a white hand on the application. You can YouTube that and, and you talk about that. So that's what I've been paying attention Okay, to the Michael Jordan thing because, you know, people ask me Michael Jordan and, and Muhammad Ali, and, and I think, you know, athletically, it's about Michael Jordan. I said, but Muhammad Ali did so much more. You know what I mean? He did so, so, so much more. And today is good news that Michael Jordan has finally come out and decided to get behind this. Because uh, because he was on the other he was on the other side, man. Investing yeah. in prisons, yeah, of course. You I know, mean, he some foul in, shit. You know, yeah. as apathetic as anybody else. But you know, you asked the question, you know, about leaders now, and yeah. I think that the the notion that it's a bigger movement, and what Paulo said is the strength in numbers, and we have those numbers right now. And honestly, it feels to me like those numbers are going to keep going. You know, Peter, including Caucasian is concerned. Yes. I think that I think that we all need to be concerned. But the the person that I would pick to speak for me sure. is this brother named Tanisi. I don't want to, uh, to destroy his name, but I think it's Tanisi Coates. Okay, it's uh, Tanisi Coates. Tanisi Coates. This guy he wrote the is book brilliant. Between the World and Me. He wrote that book Between the World and Me. He's a brilliant man, and the way that he articulates certain points, it's what I'm feeling. And, you know, maybe uh, I haven't spent enough time really thinking about these things, but he has. And he says the things that are in my heart. This guy is really, really brilliant. So, you know, if what you ask me if there's one voice. Go ahead, Nick. Go ahead, Nick. He's the author of Stamped uh, from the Beginning. He's coming. Uh, Uncle Paul, so. what's his name? Um, he's his book. You're reading his book right now. He's another big one that he basically wrote a black history book starting from the 1600s. And, There's some uh, brilliant people out there. Yeah, sure. I, and that's what it is. It's these quiet people that we're not really thinking yeah. about. And I do think that yeah. your point, Kaepernick, 
yeah. I think is a huge point. I think that uh, he did not get his due. Um, he's still, you know, it, he's going to be written in the history books. He should sure, be yeah. written in the history I, books. I, I, I forgot him. I didn't have that subject matter yeah. uh, in front you of me with my notes. As a, it, takes, right. it takes a certain way. You know what's important about Kaepernick? Well, yeah. He did it peacefully. Yeah. Peacefully. Yeah. 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 Peacefully. And he got crucified for doing yes. it peacefully. People That's wrapped okay. themselves. People wrapped right. themselves in the American flag with absolute ingr ignorance, and they have no idea the liberties and freedoms that the American flag stand for. Like it blows right. it, my it's exactly mind, what man. he did. That's yeah. what it stands for. What he did yes, is what it's about. Yeah. So if you're looking you know, on the, the screen the right now. Yes, that's that book. The book <laughs> on, the right, on the right. Yeah, Stand. that's what I'm talking about. This author, yes. Yeah. Paulo, you are the man. I swear to you. I mean, you, we, we need you to come here and produce this Paulo, show. Paulo, could you say that Say that so our audience could hear that? The author yeah. in the book? Yeah, what's, what's, the, what's the name of that author? The author is uh, Ibram uh, X. Uh, Kendi. He also, he was out of BU for a while. I think he's at BU right now. Yeah. I think he's working out of BU yeah. this year. If, if they Google and, the name of the book, it might be easier, uh, uh, the, the title yeah, of the book and the name. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, his books are like, and I, I can I add to this? So, you know, I grew up in Fall River, obviously. I was yeah. born in New Bedford. Both of my parents are Cape Verdean, right? Um, we were one of the four black families in Fall River. And yeah. so, um, and, and I don't know that you guys know this, but my husband is a white cop. Okay, really? so I, 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 I I've got a lot of views in, in this whole situation. I hear you. I hear you. Um, why, why don't you write a book? Yeah, I should. <laughs> and uh, I actually went to Chapel Hill a yeah. few years, like um, Jordan's a, you know, like seven years older than me. So yeah. I went there. Um, lived there for a while. And so I just have a lot of different perspectives on kind of where race relations and I, and I will say, you know, I, you know, I have a master's and what I was taught in college in terms of black history is, is just almost non-existent. And so I, when I got to North Carolina, because I was the black white girl from Fall River, right? Yeah. You know, they call me a Yankee and all that, that stuff. Oh, yeah. And I have this oh, yeah. big bird in here. You might get, you I might get this. just as much Yankee as you do race it, as you do racist over skin color, not not as uh, it was, but it the was same brutal. type of viral shit. I took I went, I went yeah, down there. I, I was I spent. It, three it years was very there. brutal, and it was also again amongst our own race, amongst black people. But my point was is that I really was on this journey of learning black history because we I was you know I, I went to Worcester State College and you know I took one black history course, but you know there's so much that was left out, and so. I was on this journey of learning my black history and still am to this day. And so now moving to where we are right now in terms of protest and I've been to protest and I was probably one of five black people, you know, I'm in New yeah. Hampshire, one of five black people, they were all white. And I've had more friends than I can count that are white that are asking, asking me, what should they read? How can yeah, they learn? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so I've directed them to the stamp from the beginning. And I think that that's, you know, um, you know, like, you know, as we're saying is that something's different this time. Something yeah, is different. Yes, 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 yes absolutely. I, I agree with you. you should can I ask a light question real quick? Uh, of you can. Just a real light question real quick. Nikki, who was yeah. the better basket, white basketball player? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, Mike Heron or Ricky Nall? Which one oh, is please. the Oh, please. I, can we talk about coaching instead? Uh, <laughs> my husband's definitely a better coach, not a, as good of a basketball player. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, I will say Mike something is, is different. I know it. No. I can feel it in my heart. Something's different this time. Okay. Well, I, I listen to me, and, and, and I want you to, we're, we're going to, you, you should do a vlog on how white people can educate themselves and the books to read and the people to listen to. And that would be something that we would support. My here. Facebook is a very, and so, yeah. you know, one of the other questions that you asked at the beginning, yeah. how can, you know, obviously Corona right now, because yeah. it's worse than when it started is yeah. taking over, yeah. you know, and so it's a story is going to go where, you know, whatever's yeah. trending right yeah, now. Yeah, but, but half However, the country don't even believe in it. So I don't understand why it's exactly. I don't understand it, but Arizona 40 is, plus minutes Arizona is of, a new uh, Wuhan. Arizona is a new Wuhan. And so that being said, when you ask the question, how do we keep this going? I mean, uh, here's the thing is, I don't know how many people unfollowed me on Facebook, but I at least make five. And Peter knows, yes. uh, my uncle yes. knows, I make at least four to five posts every day. And I have quite the following of people because they know my story. I've had 
two wheelchair bound kids. Like I've had everything that you can imagine. So sure, people, sure. they know what I say is real. I've lost a kid. I've got, you know, a lot of, and so I make sure every day that I make at least five posts a day yeah. on race relations. Good for you. It must be hard for you, Nikki, because you know, you have a husband who's, who's not only a cop, but he, he's, he's a Caucasian man, uh, which, yep. which, which is a nice guy. Um, what, what, what kind of feedback do you get? You know, do you get any backlash, any feedback? And, you know, so we had a really interesting conversation actually uh, the other night and we've been pretty open about, you know, our conversation. He works in a really small town in Massachusetts. So we had one protest. There was a white woman and it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we grew up in Lawrence with basically, you know, Spanish Harlem. Um, so he obviously has a different perspective too, but so we talked about the whole defunding the police thing, and that was quite the conversation. And, and, and he, he, he said, you know, you, you've got to think, if you defund the police, it means a social worker is going to come out and do my job, and that takes away from, you know, what I'm doing. And yeah. so you need to think about that. I, While he said things need to change and we do need police reform, even sure. in Massachusetts. Yeah, no, of, course, so that, yeah of, of, of course we do. I mean, if it, if, yeah. in Massachusetts, it takes you longer to be a hairdresser than it does to be a cop. Yes. Exactly. And, like my and, husband and is and 47 a, a years old. 47 now, years old. He yeah. went through the academy for in six months, and he's a cop. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Come on. Uh, well, let's talk about defunding the police because that's something I have here. I think there's a misconception by when you use the word yes. defunding yes. that we're talking about uh, like limiting jobs. We dispute. Now let's talk about the case where she's talking about when the social worker. Let's say it's a drug overdose. Okay, and this is the counter argument that was made to me by a cop friend of mine who was a, who was very progressive thinking and all about police reform. He says the problem with not sending a cop to an overdose victim who gets knock in, sometimes they wake up violent because of the knock in and how it wakes them up, and they get super super aggressive. So how is a social worker? going to be able to handle that are we putting the social work at risk i'm just saying a lot of a lot of throughout all education and thought there's a lot of theories that sound real good on paper but when you put it into practicality there are problems okay can i get this That's one first problem, uh, can i get this one first hold on hold on we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna and i am for defunding and restructuring the police I believe it starts with the thin blue line, but we'll save that for another day, okay? But yes, uh, uh, let, let's Reggie come in, then we'll go to Paulo. No, no, let me get me, let me get this uh, first. I'm gonna yield my let, time to my cousin. Yeah. Go ahead, man. Let, <laughs> see, in all these situations, black, you know, us African Americans, yeah. we look at you guys and you say, "Well, how come in this situation you are able to do it, in this situation you can't?" I'm going to give you a situation. Yeah. There's a bank robbery, and they have hostages. Yeah. What happens when you have hostages in the bank robbery? I don't know. You tell me. The first thing that comes in is a neg negotiator. Sure, yeah. So if there's a person on Nakan and a cop arrives to the scene, he can call in the social worker to go in first if he deems it safe at first. The same way he can bring a negotiator to a bank robbery, you can bring in a social yeah, worker. Yeah, but, 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 but that's not that's not that's not practical. I mean, we're talking about yeah. I mean, they've had 18, uh, 18 people knock in in one day and forever. Let me tell you. But dude, secure the situation no, no, first. No, no, listen, listen. First scene, secure. You, you, and you, then ha you have observe. to hold on. You have to understand this. All I'm doing is creating debate. The bit yeah. that needs to be discussed. Okay. I'm not saying that I am not necessarily for the social worker first. Let's could be I, perfectly could I, clear could about I that. Something? Yep. Okay. You need police officers to, to get on scene for that because, first of all, yep. they're committing a crime. First of all, yeah. they're okay. committing a crime. Sure. So they have to be there. If they're committing a crime, they have to be there. Actually, then you call. Right. Then you call EMS. Yep. EMS has to be there on site at the same time sure, as sure, the police yeah. officers. Yeah. Now, if AMS is there at the same time as, as, as the police officers, sure. then you have a co co cohesion and everything. Then you have to have a social worker to take care of the rest. Sure. Now, these police officers are social workers 
not by their job no, responsibility or training, or training, or training but the situation they're put yeah, in. But that's because they were put in that. You know yeah. why they were put in that? Yeah. Because politicians take, took money away from these, these hospitals, these uh, mental institutions. Sure, yeah, sure. Taunton Host Hospital does not exist because they took money out of there. Sure. And you know what they're sticking them in? Sure. They're sticking them in the Dartmouth House of Corrections. They're sticking them in Barnstable. They're sticking them in all House of, House of Corrections sure. in this state and everything if you're mentally in, in, in able to take care of yourself. Yeah. That's where they're going. I'd like to see Black Lives Matter yeah. surround Sheriff Hudson. I'd pay to see that. Right. Uh, no, 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 what, no, 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 hold, no, no, no. Okay, Reggie. 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 Yeah. Good, no, I mean, Peter, Peter stole my thunder, and that, that's okay. You know, I like it because that, that's where I was going. Um, but So I'm going to take it from a different perspective, right? Yeah. So my background is in marketing. I got into a debate on Facebook with one of my uh, friends, on Facebook about uh, defunding the police. And, you know, maybe surprisingly to you guys, I was markedly against the, not the, the theory that's behind defunding the police. I, I think what happened was they got, they confused the situation by using the word defunding because it's easily Absolutely. can be confusing. So right. now you want there to take money and resources Amen. away yeah. from people that are here to protect you. Yeah. And police, I know, yeah. took it that way yeah. because it can easily be taken sure. that way. Yeah. So myself and another person with 20 years plus of marketing, where we were trying to explain to these people, listen, you picked the wrong term. You pick the exactly wrong brand. Right. It's an easy brand to just say defund the police. Oh yeah, you know maybe that sounds good to you. All right, well, it doesn't I'll, sound I'll, good I'll, to police. Red, it doesn't red, sound red, good red, to people that have had problems sure. and have needed the police. Because if of you course. needed the police, there's no way you're gonna say defund the police. Absolutely, the police saved yeah, my sure. life. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely yeah, right. So, it, that, that's you know, a you, you it's a bad it's a bad word that isn't directly. It, it's the wrong word. Now let me ask you a question, okay? My father told me one time, okay, you point a finger, you say something's wrong, you have to replace it with something that works. Give me the, a word that works. Is it re-education? Is it reforming the police? Can I give one? Give me that buzzword. I, I don't, want, I don't, want, to, I don't no, want to give up anybody's things, but I think it's redistribution. Redistribution. Okay, yeah. That's all it is. Sure. All it is is redistribution. That's a mouthful, though. That's it. That's a mouthful. No, but the thing You're is. Right. You're right. You're right. mouthful. What? It is a mouthful. I think that the, the well, notion right. of it That's what it's the, about. what's behind it makes a lot of sense. Of but it's you about. need to say it. And, and, you know, Mike, you put me on the spot, but, I, you know, I think oh, some yeah. thought has to go behind it, right? Before you just come out and say defund the police, you yeah. need to explain what that means with sure. what you say. And it sure. does need to be short and sweet. And I understand what well, the point that was trying to be made by the person that was against me and my marketing friend, they, you know, they kept yeah. kind of, you know, condescendingly yeah. saying, oh, you guys are marketing people. You're into branding and yeah. all this stuff. And, they, you know, they weren't really listening. Right. Yeah. So what we were trying to get across is that right off the bat, you're shutting people down. Right. And you're making it easy for them. Just look at just what, yeah. what, what, yeah. what's yeah. happening right yeah. now. Look at the last Trump ad. They took that, like we both knew as people that have been in marketing sure, for a yeah, long time, yeah. we knew that they were going to take that and turn it against you. If you see that fair mongering ad that yeah. Trump is currently running about defund the police, ha, 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 say something yeah. about, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, uh, what are you going to do when you're in a specific situation? It's just a real scary ad, but they sure. made it by saying yeah. that super easy yes. to do that. Now, I haven't put enough thought into it, but I yeah. guarantee you, that if these people that are way on the left and refuse to listen, just listen to some people that sure. are on their yes, side, yes, yes, but have a different uh, a different kind of experience. It's not just activism. It's somebody like myself yeah. or you know my friend Amy that has been in marketing. Yeah. You can easily come up with a term that explains better what it is you're trying to do yeah. because what you what you're trying to do is uh, it is honorable. Sure. You're trying to take these funds yeah. and push them in different directions w that will ultimately help the police. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It, so it, what it, I it, think yeah. the police need is training. And Peter Pitt hit the nail on the head when he talked about that a police officer is a social worker. 
<laughs> right in the beginning. Yeah. So if they have more of that and more diffusing a situation sure. and less of, you know, what leads to, you know, somebody getting hurt, yeah. I think we're all going to benefit. But that fund, that defunding yeah. moniker sure. really hurt them. And now Trump yeah. is making it so it's hurting them even more and it will continue to hurt them. I, I, but they, yeah. for some reason, they can't see it. I, 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 yeah, well, give me one second. I think police should do a, min, a, a minimum week in jail before they get the job. I think that they should have community, two years of community service, whether it's teaching, substitute teaching, working in a boys club, working with a YMCA, coaching youth sports, running some type of music nonprofit, some place where they are immer immersed into their entire community. Not just the blue community, where they're, in, where, where, where they're dealing with all of us. That's, or, or, and some... I don't want to go with the college thing because college isn't for everybody. But I, I told you about my cousin in the FBI, right? I, I told, I told yeah, you about we, my cousin the, in, the, in, in, in the FBI. Yeah. The FBI told my cousin to go substitute teaching in an urban school district and come back to us in two or four years. He went back to us I, I and got, they hired him. I got something for you. Yeah. Uh, I think New York City did this yeah. when they were having a, a high crime rate. Sure. They need to have walking beats again. Yeah. Police officers need to walk the beat and get to know the community again. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're rolling around in cars. We're going right past communities. Hey, if I want to go past, if I want to go past Second Street or Third yeah. Street or whatever and everything, I'm driving past. But if I'm walking, I have to communicate with those people in the community. Yeah, no, I hear Don't you. I? Yeah. yeah. Okay. My, yeah. Nick, Mike, Nikki's, you, Nikki's trying to speak. Yeah, over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. I'm about to get you, Nikki. Mike, you <laughs> literally just described Ricky Null. <laughs> when you, the whole entire thing, take yourself off mute, Nikki. Come on in, girl. Come on. She's on mute. Yeah, unmute her. Hold on, hold on. I, hold on. Got, got there it. we go. Got Wait, what? We just had hold her. On One more time. All right. There we go. Am yeah. I on? Yeah, yes. you're on now. Go ahead. Okay. So Camden, New Jersey. You guys yep. know about that? Oh, yeah. They literally, they literally turned around their whole police department. Their crime rate dropped by 40%. When this whole thing hit with George Floyd, their, their police department marched with black lives matter yeah. why can we not this is this is we need to model after that's this it. so that's that's my point Thanks. there so because they right. what that's they did they had, they had the secret formula so we need to learn from them my uh, second thing yeah. is and what you said mike is exactly right so my husband he's born and bred in lawrence he's the white guy that they think he's spanish but he's just the french guy yeah. or whatever but he's <laughs> been at the boys club he has yeah. been he's still he runs sure. an au with yeah, eighth graders there you go. he has yeah. been ingrained yeah. with this and yeah. he was an uh, assistant principal so for him going to the police force he that was the training he needed sure. to be a cop yeah this is like you're saying you do need something else other than in so i'll tell you one of his a conversation he had with one of his young kids that he just you know graduated and he made a comment to my husband like oh you know i got another one of those thugs and yeah. my husband like what are you talking about right and he said yeah a kid from lawrence and my husband laughed because he's yeah. a kid from lawrence yeah, right yeah, 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 and he yeah, had yeah. to say to him like what's your point dude like he's from yeah. lawrence and what yeah and he's like well you know he probably has a record he said but dude you have a dui on your record yeah right <laughs> yes we yeah. talked like, about listen to me i said four kids from four river getting pulled over in somerset where the drugs at? Where the guns at? Get on a get on a pavement. Four K yep. Verde kids to do the same thing in Rochester. It's going to be the same thing. It's not all about color. Yeah, the, the black eyes movement there, is about it. It's it, 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 about it, but it's it's deeper than that. There is there a but this is because these kids well, come in. Yeah. They have no other training, is what I'm saying. They right. just going into the police force, and that's all they have. Okay. They don't have life training. They no, have absolutely. No they there don't have go. life experience. There you they, go. they don't have enough exactly. salt on them. There you go. Listen, man, I'm going to I'm going to just jump in and say that, you know, I know people and I'm not going to blow up this spot. I know people that are on police forces. I know that they were straight up criminals as kids. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's just I mean, I know really, some of them also really bad. You know, you know, I witnessed easy. some of those crimes. <laughs> hey, I, every right. day, every day yeah. on Facebook, a kid who flunked eighth grade history acts like they're a political science major. Yes. <laughs> right. Absolutely. I mean, what was yeah. You, gotta be you know, I gotta, I gotta ask Nikki a personal question. I don't mean to, you know, take us to a side, but you, you know, you said your husband works on the Lawrence Police Force. 
No, he's actually Dunstable. So he, uh, all of his buddies are from Lawrence. That's where he's born and raised. So he's not, okay. he's not in Lawrence. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. all right. I just yeah, a that's a whole nother, on the, on the I know you get, and there's a whole nother, yeah, yeah. like, yeah. So it yeah. would have been a different experience had he been on the Lawrence Police Force. I'm telling you that much right now. We would be having a very yeah. different conversation Got given it. everything that's going on in this climate if he was on Lawrence or Methuen, which are both very racist, very racist yeah. um, police departments. Um, yeah. So I think that that's where our narrative has changed. But I get where you were thinking about that whole situation. Could, so, could I, yeah. Could I ask you a question, Nikki? Yeah. Could I ask you a question? You know, both of us being with, uh, you know, my, my, right. wife is, my wife is Portuguese, you know, and your husband. Yeah. Um, what, have you noticed anything going down the street like me? I know oh. I notice oh, yeah. I get I get d certain looks when I go through different parts of the country. I get d oh, different yeah. looks and you know it's it's but but when I'm when I'm here in Massachusetts, even in southern Massachusetts, it's a normal thing. It's yeah, normal. Exactly it's it's like right. it's like it's like we we and we're in our own world. It's like you feel so comfortable being in here in, in southern Massachusetts and 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 you know everybody's everybody's with each other you know what i mean like of a so different when race I was in north carolina uh, my husband you know uh, this is a pretty funny story i will say in the south and i have a different perspective because i'm a black woman with a white man sure, yeah 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 so in the south that is is faux pas like that is looked upon you don't do that okay how, how much from your own race were pissed off at you Oh, more so. There you go. More so than white yeah. people. So we, we were walking in a mall together, and we weren't even holding hands, and a black older couple came up to us and said, this is a crying shame. <laughs> My husband never yeah. left the house, stuck with his yeah. video games, and never went back to North Carolina yeah. after that. Yeah. So I, and, I've and seen so, that. I had, I had an awful... And we're also our own worst enemy. And like, well, Uncle Paul, going back to what he's saying is unity. As a black community, we need unity because we are our own oh. worst enemy because I should be embraced by my own uh, uh, race, but I wasn't. And also being Cape Verdean, yeah. like I said, I had different hair, so they already marked me as yeah. being different. Red bone, and yellow, <laughs> yellow yep. brother, so, red yeah, bone, yeah, yeah, yeah. Reggie yep. knows. So so I think for me, I got a very difficult path <laughs> living in the south as opposed to coming oh, back yeah. up here oh, yeah. it's a very known thing that like it's it's not much different you know i i haven't faced much racism with uh, with us being a couple even living in new hampshire live free or die I, I not, now, 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 yeah. now, now you brought up about black black people being hot on one another and, 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 and we'll, let's talk about this <laughs> let me slip this in here okay let me slip this question here for my conservative friends nick uh what, what's your issue on black on black crime is it, is it social economic related? Why? I think it is. I mean, so here's the thing. I, you know, I have okay. a 20 year old daughter. She's very, very, very bright. She's obviously uh, um, uh, biracial and it, it comes down to poverty. Like we are, if you look in black neighborhoods, what do you have? You have liquor stores. Yeah. You have, what is sure. it? The, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a cash, like cash, your check there, uh -huh. laundromats. It's systematically made so we can never Plan get parenthood. out of that. Yes, you're right. Yes, you're right. yes. Planned Parenthood. Yeah, yeah. You, know, yeah. you, you cannot get out of that situation. And so it is systematically made so that black people cannot get out of that situation. And the only way for them to get out of that situation is if they sell drugs or do illegal things. And that sounds, it, you know, people don't get that, but that is the situation. Not, yeah, not, right? the, not yeah. the only way, but working, it's, at, it's, work, hold on, working at McDonald's. It ain't gonna get it, you it's, that. It's a bridge too far, yeah. and, and, and that's not the answer either. You know, you know what? You, you know what? You know what the crazy part is. You know what the crazy part is. I lived in California for ten years. Sure. Ten years. Do you realize that every, every Home Depot, every every store, Lowe's, any place that had yeah. had work, they came with truck to pick pick up the Spanish guys. Yeah. They're not going with trucks into the black neighborhoods and picking up pe picking right. up black people I to bring to. go get them a job. Why do, why do they do it with the Spanish guys in California, in Texas, in Arizona, but they're leaving the black guys behind? So answer that too. question. I, I, and these, I, I, and these are, and these are, these are why, big why, why, companies, why, 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 big companies. Why, 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 you want to know why? Because they're probably, 
paying the immigrant worker less. They're probably keeping them off the books. Significant. We, we won't take that money. I'm going to tell you, man, I reject that notion of black on black crime, and I'm really sick of it. So since the 80s, since I was a teenager, I've been hearing that term and feeling bad about it and trying to figure out, oh, so why is it going on? Man, what's wrong with my people? It's bull crap, man. You just what the bottom line is crime happens where you live. So of course it's gonna be a higher percentage of black people committing crimes on black people if we're all in the same place, especially if we're in that socioeconomic prison that Nikki talked about. You know, it's just it's a it's a matter of survival in those places. So maybe the crime rate is higher and it's black people on black people, but look at white on white crime. Right, the right. percentages are just all they're right uh, equal. There. Well, just just look it's at the math. Either. White 65%. people commit crimes yeah. on white people. It's just where you live. That's it's just the yeah. simplest thing, right? Seventy-three so percent of the when United I, States somebody is Somebody opened my eyes to that. Well, right? Yeah. Can, can I give can, can, can I give you guys a worldview? You yes. Can I give you guys a worldview on this whole point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me give, let me give you guys a worldview. For eight oh. years, I served in the military in Europe. Okay, when I left New Bedford. I thought black on black crime was the only crime in the world until I got to Europe. Yeah, go when to I Serbia. got to Europe, when I got to Europe and I started seeing them countries and when I traveled to other third world countries, yeah. poor people kill poor people over social economic reasons. Poor, and it's only, poor people, it, poor, on, poor yeah. people in Ireland kill poor people over yeah. religion. West Virginia, oh, West I mean, Virginia. You want to talk about you want, I mean, town split in half. That poor, poor Protestants people. on one side, Catholics on the other. Again, poor people hurt people. Hurt people. Yes, yeah. Yugoslavia is no longer Yugoslavia. Okay, <laughs> okay, but I, 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 it's, it's, it, okay, but it has to be addressed because the the, the 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 amount of young black people we are losing. Could Could I just say one thing? Okay, yeah, yes. Because last time we had this discussion, remember Paulo. We were talking about Chicago and the crime rate in Chicago. Well, yeah, I did my. I went. I did. Your I went. I, did. I, went but I, my think, I think I said the per capita thing. I think I had five right. out of the right. ten places. No, no. But I, right. I did go. I do did yeah. go per capita. Sure. I started well out with a thousand, yeah. a thousand, yeah. and then I went to hundred thousand. Chicago didn't even make the top fifty. Of course, it, yeah. It, it didn't even make the top ten. It didn't make the top fifty. If you look at it. And, you know, because the president is loud and, and, and he's insecure, and and insecure. And he but, says, but Chicago was looked at as a world class city, the city with broad shoulders. I understand that. The first world's favorite country, the country hosted, I believe, was in Chicago. Chicago was but, a bright light for people of the African American community, wait, and I think that's why it gets a lot of attention. African Americans only account for 13% of the American population. Sure. Uh, white okay. Americans account for sixty five percent. What's it? it wh where are the Hispanics at media? now? What, what, where's what's oh, the Hispanic they, demographic? Mid mid twenties, mid twenties, yeah, mid twenties. Yeah, because they're yeah. they're the Browning of America. So sure. it oh, is yeah. what the media puts out there. That's what you got to realize that you got all these serial killers and all that stuff. They're killing white people. Yeah, they ain't putting those what, what about out. the what about the school shootings? Yeah, yeah, you know, is, yeah. We talked about this on the radio before. You know, yeah. you know, this is this is craziness. Yeah, I mean, are you talking about you're talking white about kids? Much. White kids are privileged living in their parents' basement. That's is right. the common denominator. Uh, yeah. uh, how many how many black schools have had school shootings? Nah, nah, like we that. talked about it a thousand times. Absolutely none. How many serial killers? Uh, you go you go up and down the line. How many genocidal maniacs? Hitler, Stalin. It's, it's, it's not there. And just uh, think, school shootings are down because we're stuck in the house with Corona. <laughs> so uh, that's what it's uh, out, silver right? lining. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Okay, let, let me switch this up. Okay, let, let, let me ask you a question because I got to steer this ship to the center as much as I possibly can. Why do black people believe in Joe Biden? Tell me why. He's not Trump. There you yeah, go. You go. <laughs> <laughs> it's hey, really hey, as simple as that. Let me tell you something. It is it simple really as that. Is. Because I, I want to let somebody else answer, but I just got to give this this uh, statistic. In, in uh, 1,226 days of the president being president, he has lied or had false or misleading claims 19,127. And I took, and I took, Unbelievable. I took Was the Washington <laughs> yeah. Post, I took, I took, yeah, I, I took know, all yeah. political, I took, yeah. took all, everybody, There's a running everybody, everybody. Of everything he says, I added it, says, I added yeah. it all up, yeah, I added, yeah. it all up yeah. I added it all up, yeah. and I came, and I came with the even, with the even number. Yeah. And that's, 
that's amongst all the all the group the groups reporting on this. Sure, yeah. 19,127 19, false or misleading lies. Yeah. yeah. It's by did you, design. Did you add the one today? Did you add the no, one? No, no, this that was that's that was of June 30th. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like the oh, bigger question is why do people want to vote for Trump? That's the bigger question. There you go. Because he was okay. he wasn't Obama. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't just. It wasn't just that. Uh, 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 but I'm saying now. Uh, uh, but, now. I mean, because when I, when I was a kid, you remember my father was a state rep. Do you remember my dad being a state rep? Yep. Okay, yep. he won by 42 votes. Back then, 88 percent of the uh, uh, of, of of his state rep district turned out to vote. 88 percent. That's crazy. Hand counted ballots. Four o'clock in the morning at the Eagles Club on Locust Street. We found out he won. He was a Baptist from Alabama that we had to keep quiet that he was from Alabama. Okay, I couldn't even tell anybody he wasn't Catholic wow. at the time. Okay, politician was not a dirty word when I was growing up. The male that would come in there would say the Honorable Albert Heron. And I'd be like, why do they have to go through this ridiculous formality? He said, I don't know, it's, but, but that's what it was. Politician wasn't a dirty word then. The media and the way political campaigns and opposition research people come to the forefront and has turned the word politician into a dirty word and their foolish behavior sitting apart from one another during speeches and some sitting down and some standing up clapping and all of, all of the histrionics of it and... You know, the, the uh, $600 screwdriver for the Pentagon and all of the stuff that goes with it, it's been turned into a dirty, nasty word. And I, I, I hence to my marketing, Reggie, the drain the swamp people were tired of, of, of embedded politicians. And I, that was another reason why they went for Trump. That and they voted for him women. because he lied Reggie. to them. Yeah. He made them think things. He made yeah. them think they're going to get their wall. Yeah. He, he tapped into their fears and their xenophobia. Yeah. He tapped into their racism, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not saying they were all racist. And I know that some good people voted for Trump because I believe that they were misled. Yeah, the ones yeah. to answer Nick, Nikki's question, I think the ones that just refuse to see all the lies and refuse to see what he's about and what he, where his heart really is, the, those people are just willfully ignorant, right? right? They yeah. just they just don't they don't want to see what they don't want to see, and they just want to latch on to the things that they believe that he's saying when they know in their heart of hearts that he is a liar. I don't even know. I don't even know. If, I don't even know if they know that. But I want to say one thing, and, and I like everybody else to talk about this. My my point of no return from Donald Trump came when he. Made fun of the reporter with cerebral palsy. Same that here, was it for here. me. My, mine was that, different. That was, my, mine was that, different. that was it. How can the president of the United States, okay? My mother told me, be, be kinder to people that are less fortunate than you, that are older than you, uh, 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 that don't have it as good as you, okay? For the president of the United States to go, and mock yeah. somebody who Rough. was with him, I was kids. like, Nick, what Nick, the Nick, fuck? Nick, Nikki can talk on that. Nikki, Those are my right. kids. Nikki so, can talk so, on that. Yeah, so like I said, I have every perspective every time of things. I just I, this is why I think my gift in life, the one gift I have, is that when he, you know, I'm a black woman married to a white cop. I had two special need kids. Yeah. So the minute he did that, Mike, it wasn't even just that for me because I knew he was a racist. But yeah. I said my family represents everything that this man hates. Yeah. Everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But and who so does that, though? Him, I mean, I mean, who does that? The leader of the free world is fucking mocking somebody who's handicapped. And, and, like, and, and, a and person, a person that ha this is a, this is what it is. A person that has no integrity, no compassion, no empathy, and he made fun of him. He worse, made fun of worse than that, Peter. Something's listen, broken to me. Okay. So there's, there's, there's something wrong. He don't have a heart. He he does not have a heart. He wasn't born I, with a heart. Can I tell you what tipped the scales during that election? What really tipped the scales for him was two groups that all he had to do was say one thing with the two groups, and that tipped the scale for him. Even the people that didn't like him making fun of that and him being a racist, when he turned around and said, I am anti-abortion and I will get you your judges, and there's 247 judges up for this, this cycle, 
That's what tipped the scales. Yeah. You had your religious yeah. black people down south, yeah. and then you had the well, other I'm going to take some of that, Paulo. He's not, fool, he's not fooling them anymore. He's not well, fooling so in Texas and in Georgia anymore. Yeah. Where he's ahead. So, I have some, so listen, I have family that they are black Americans, and yeah. they are very religious. And to this day, they will still vote for Trump because of their religion. Riddle me that. I don't understand Re Religion. That. Religion. <laughs> Nikki. <laughs> This man, this man has been through three marriages, how many different children and everything, and he's, he's committed more sins and sins and stuff. I, I understand. I understand that, you know, you know the, the, the thief on the cross, he changed his ways with Jesus right there. But Tom, Donald Trump is not changing his ways. He is no. not repenting of his sins. And stuff. So I don't but understand. He does have I mean, these Christian evangelists, and I—that's the question. I guess is a bigger question for you guys. I because literally, I had a call with my family, and I was instructed because I have a big mouth that I could not bring up Trump <laughs> <laughs> because their stance was that they they love Trump, and we have different stance, and it's because of their religion. So help now, me understand. But, but, but ask him if the, if they're pro if they're pro life like that. Ask him if they're for the death penalty. Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. no, as, as, as pro life, I like I mean it's crazy. Yeah. But, 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 pro life but, is a lie. Pro life is a lie. You know why it's a lie? Because it should be called pro birth. Because the minute a black or, or a brown skinned person is born, oh, yeah. they no longer care about you. Yes. So it's yeah. so whenever yeah. somebody says yeah. pro life, I tell them no, you're pro birth. Because yeah. I don't see y'all defending any brown skin or dark skin lives, you know. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. let me let, let, last question about Joe Biden. All right, and it, all right, my the person I wanted to vote, I wanted a, a presidential ticket of Camilla Harris and Pete Buttigieg. Okay, yeah, I like Pete. I did like Pete. Yeah. But but the black community could not warm up to Camilla Harris. Okay, the black community. You know what I mean? the, the, hold on, I'm, right. I'm gonna. I know why, but you know where I'm going with this. So yes. you remember, I gotta, yes. I, play, I gotta play down the middle as much as I can. Okay. Okay, the Black Lives Matter have targeted the L.A. District Attorney, who's also black, the first female to be elected uh, L.A. County District Attorney black because of her policies. So if the poli if the po uh, should Camilla Harris got more support from her community, <coughs> regardless of her being a prosecutor with three strikes you're out and all that other stuff. Can I, can I tell you who Kamala, can I tell you who Kamala Harris is attached to? <coughs> Oh, who sorry. worked under her? Oh. Let me give you a name. The name is Michelle Alexander. Michelle, Michelle Alexander. Obama. She wrote Michelle the Obama. book. No, Michelle Alexander. She wrote the book, The New Jim Crow. Yeah. She I actually mean, worked. Yeah. She worked under Kamala Harris. The problem with Kamala Harris was Kamala Harris was Paul was following the letter of the law, and she was putting black lives in jail sure. because of the letter of the law. But not a law that. But not a law that she made. No, no, no. And she, she did take she did take an oath. That's yeah, my yeah, point. Yeah. That's mean, her I mean, problem. They're she, not gonna let that go. Been, but, they, but should they? Because she was boxed in there. She did it in the wrong place. If she did it in Pocatello, yeah, I know. No if she go, did it right. somewhere else, go, she, she, she Dr. Did Reggie it. is marketing. When you yeah. do that in California, yeah. the world's gonna know. No, about not it. not just California. LA, I know, I know. No, 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 no. Northern California. Sure. She did it. The home of the Black Panthers. Yes, that's yes, what she did. It. That's the mistake she made. Sacramento, now yeah, Oakland. She, it's a big one. She yeah, was putting yeah, men like me, but her yeah, people that were teenagers at the really, time in early twenties, yeah, guys world. just like me, she was putting them behind bars for inordinate amounts of time. So you know, I I can tell you why. I I mean, she. I understand her brilliance. I understand the fact that you know she she had. Uh, taking um, responsibility for what she did, but I just could not get past it. Sure. Yeah. How about the next time? I, mean, I just know I, too I, much. I, 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 this is what she's saying. She's busting her ass. It's a prestigious job. She kicks in the glass ceiling, but some of these laws were not... Were, uh, there's no wiggle room in. Some, oh, some of them, some, let me on. give you... I'm going to give you an Alabama on, answer. On. Uh, listen to me. Let, 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 I, I, let's be careful who we shut the door on permanently for some... Some early discretions into their careers. That, that okay, like Mike, Mikey, yes. your family's from Alabama, right? Yes, some of them. Let me let me give you a name with a similar situation. Yeah, George Wallace. 
Mm-hmm. Nah, it's like yeah. thing, man. It's George, George, George Walsh was a scumbag pig. He's like, nah. Yeah. Nah, that's not working for me. Hey, oh, man, he went, not working he for went me. all the George way in. <laughs> Come on, Paul. You got you to gotta do better than that. Right, hold no, on right now. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got I to gotta direct this madness. And I, I want to know that you're doing an amazing job, by the way. Yes, he is. And so, and so is Peter. Okay, does it have to be a black woman? For you to be all if you on want board. the black vote, if you want the black vote, which we need to win, it does need to be a black female. Black Sorry. and female black. female and, votes and, are gonna yeah. win. And, oh. and for the record, he's on record saying that he's yeah. picking a black female sure. as his vice president. No, he said a right. female. He hasn't said he a said black female. female. Listen, female. we are yeah. living in a hypothetical world. Do not shoot the messenger. I'm throwing it out there, a question that everybody wants to know. There are more articles on this than CNN over the last 30 days about who's going to pick than any other issue. Paulo, does it have to be a black female for you? Listen, I'm going to, I'm going, y'all going to think I'm crazy, but what? because of because of COVID and the way things were handled, I thought that if he did not choose a black female yeah. from you know the one from Georgia or Dellum. Our Dellums from Florida. Or Camilla I Harris. Thought, Don't count her out. Don't count my. No, no, I'm not counting Kamala out. But I told you, the only white man he could choose would be Mario Cuomo right now. Oh, That's yeah. it. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. it. Oh, yeah. That's Andrew, it. Said it. Yeah, he's my I'm, guy. Andrew, Andrew Cuomo. Andrew Cuomo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't Cuomo. know if you guys saw it. I don't know if you guys saw the interview, but I saw an interview the other day with Amy Klobuchar. Amy Klobuchar. Wow. Amy Klobuchar <laughs> said, said that. Joe Biden would not win this election without a black female. Yeah, yep. and, yeah, and but, she and but, she was and she was. If he, he fucked up the corona so bad. He's fucked up so bad that I, I think we're Paulo. I I don't think it has to be that way now. I think when you have yeah. when you have financially uh, minded Republicans that are walking away, the Bush group that the the group that the Bush people put together and Lincoln Project, Lincoln Project, yeah, the Lincoln Project and, 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 is, ooh, they and are running. Mary yep, Conway's yep. Mary Conway's husband, who has a lot of conservative friends, he is starting to get attacked from from within. You know who's gonna turn it back on him at the end of the day? Lindsey Graham. Mark my words. He's Lindsey getting Graham. there. I mean he turned on with, I get with but the mask, so I think he's trying to, but what? At the end of the day, these men these men will still ride for him. He could commit murder and they would ride for him. Are people Nick, are people gonna wait in, because let me tell you something about his support. His, his, his base is real solid, and they're going to wait in line, and they're going to wait in the rain. Uh, 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 the anti-Trump is going to be that committed at the ballot box. They have to be. They have to be. They have to be. They have to be. Have Here's to be. what I think. Here's what I think. We yeah. put it over the top, guys, um, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I am hell-bent on this, and I really want it to happen. It is votevets.org. Right. You go to votevets.org and what they're doing. But when you take that and you uh, kind of, uh, you know, squeeze it and find out what you get, what you get is Tammy Duckworth. Oh, they Tammy were saying Duckworth. that. Yep. Yep. That's the person that the person that really put it over the top was one of those Fox guys. I don't oh, know yeah. if it was Tucker Carlson. No, it was, tu- it was Tucker Carlson. And, and Duck, yep. yeah, so, you know, he was saying American, how she right? shouldn't be how he she yes, shouldn't yes. be the VP candidate, but she absolutely should because in those swing states that are going to be the problem, I believe yeah. that she she takes some of those people that were going to go and either not vote or vote for Trump. She's going to switch some of those mindsets if they market it properly. And it's a a crying shame, but marketing is a huge part of this. I just watched the movie Irresistible. I believe that all of you should watch that movie. It's it's somewhat satire, but there's there is there's some no Reggie, you are spot on. I I watched the interview this morning, and Tucker Carlson probably gave her what she needed to kind of get the like he actually helped her. Um, you know, tough. she's a war vet. She's got a purple she's heart. A war vet. She gave yep, up she her legs, legs yep. for this country. You can't dispute that. You nope. can't dispute it. I understand the notion of wanting a black female, but I believe that black females can get on board with Tammy Duckworth. I don't even know what yes. her background is. She she's looks Native like she's, American, you know, well, you they know, were saying yeah, Native even American. on, so, on the, you know. she's Native American and on The View this morning, she's one of the first in Senate that was pregnant and brought her child to the Senate floor. She wow. has like, so many pluses. She, she appeals to the negative. Well, you know yep. something? Trump will find a negative in everybody, just like he did with John McCain. He said that he was not a yeah. hero being yeah. a POW. 
Yes. Yeah, because he got caught. Because he got caught. Because yeah. that angered a lot of vets. Like that me. The people me. That can put yes, yeah, Paul. Exactly. We so talked about it that. It angered me as well. I, mean, I, I haven't been on That's board it. with John for we, a we, long time. We, we talk about. We disagree on so many points, but yeah. man, when he said that, Listen. I know the vets that I know. We're not happy about it, especially the Listen. older white men. A lot of those guys, you talk about the point where yeah. they jumped off Trump's bandwagon. Yeah. A lot of those guys jumped off at that point. Uh, you cannot treat John McCain, yeah. a you know prisoner, a former prisoner of war, a war vet, a hero in many, many people's eyes. You can't do that. And clearly somebody who was working his entire life in the best interest of the United States of America. Sure, Till the end. Not all Thank these guys can say that. And, I can't, you know, and, I gotta, and I gotta I Hold on, hold on, hold on, go, go. John McCain's best moment, okay, was when he corrected that Bertha who said that Obama was a Muslim and he wasn't from here. And he stopped him and, and stopped and says, hey, no. Beautiful. He's a decent a man, man with, with he's a decent man with a decent right. family. Let Paul go. Listen to me. Before I go, before I go, let yeah. me get something on John McCain. Right. Let me tell you something. You said that was John McCain's best moment? No, no, no. I said one of his no, best moments. No, 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 it's when he voted for Obamacare to stay. That's what no, it was. No, 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 no. John McCain's best moment ever yeah. was as a prisoner of war. John yeah. McCain was born in the Navy. Yeah, his father was an admiral. Yeah, yeah, of course. He yeah. was born, he wasn't born in America. He was born in Panama. Yeah, sure, yeah. While his yeah. father was stationed. He also, so cra when, he also crashed three jets. And if it wasn't for his father, he would have been a pilot. Once he got caught, well, knowing who his father yeah. was, the commander. Yeah, yeah he could have left whenever he wanted. Right. Exactly. And, and he did it. And, and, and he wasn't a hero because of his accomplishments in the Navy. It was his fortitude and character by it's staying, it, by it's staying it's in the yeah. Hanoi Hilton and saying, I'm yeah. not leaving without my men. Listen, folks. And exactly. Trump tried to discredit that. He did. He, he said did. he's not a hero because he was a prisoner of, a war, sure. a prisoner of war, but he yeah. decided yeah. to stay there. I'm going to say yeah, I, I got to go. I got to go, guys. Oh, okay. yeah. Says, the, says the draft judge with yeah. six deferments. Hey, just before we go, yeah. Yeah, exactly. anybody that served in the military is a hero to me. And I'm sure Mike, I'm sure Mike, hey, because, man. because I, yeah. didn't, I didn't go over there and fight. I, would, yeah. I didn't put that uniform on. So anybody that wears that uniform sure. is a hero to me. Uh, uh, there you go. And we're going to end it like that, folks, because that's, uh, that's about as good as it gets, my man Pete Neal and that. Everybody have fun? <laughs> yeah, fun. yeah. I, 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 this is my jam. We're going to do this. Uh, time out. Let's make a date. Same bad Next time, week. same bad channel. Listen, people, right now, it's a beautiful day out there. You got to take this on your Facebook and share it with 50 friends. Okay? How do I do that? Do you have a link? You can figure He's that out. Yeah, link. just share it. Your uncle will tell you. Peter will tell you. Share it to as many friends as you possibly can. Let's try to get 10,000 views. I am the Hurricane. It's black. It's white. It's what's right. It's episode five. We'll see you next uh, Monday. Peace. Bye, guys. Thank you. Good on it. Get on it.